Could intermittent fasting help your kidney function if you have diabetes? I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director of dietdoctor.com, and a new study suggests that it might. So the study is called Six-Month Periodic Fasting in Patients with Type 2 Diabetes and Diabetic Nephropathy, a proof-of-concept study. Now, what caught my attention for this study is, um, you know, fast. a lot of people talk about intermittent fasting and the benefits of it. And what this study did was a five-day intermittent fasting diet uh, every month compared to a Mediterranean diet five days only every month with them then going back to their regular diet. I was curious because that that doesn't seem like that dramatic of an intervention, five days every month. Um, But what they wanted to see was for those people who have type 2 diabetes and have damage to their kidneys from the diabetes, which they can detect by protein leaking into the urine, did this amount of an intervention make a difference. Now first, what does it mean to leak protein? So we have proteins all, all in our blood, albumin being the one we can measure. Um, and it's not supposed to get from our blood into our urine. But as the type 2 diabetes, um, the blood sugar can start to sort of break down the vessels and make them become more permeable, as we say, in your kidneys, then the protein can start to leak from the blood into your urine. And it's a very sensitive measure to say, is somebody starting to have diabetic nephropathy or kidney disease from type 2 diabetes? And what the study concluded was for those who have Um, a microscopic, so sort of the early level of protein leakage that yes, the fasting mimicking diet can help, which I thought was really interesting. So let's get into the details. Now, the study was published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. And what they did was they randomized people with type 2 diabetes, um, ended up being 33 people with an age between 50 and 75 with an average duration of diabetes of 13 years. So this wasn't just like brand new people with type 2 diabetes. They've had it for 13 years and they were an older cohort. And they had an increased albumin to creatinine ratio, or ACR as they abbreviate it. And basically, that's just the the test you use to say, okay, you are leaking some protein in your urine where it's not supposed to be. And it was a six-month study. But in that six months, only five days a month that they actually follow the protocol. So they ate just their normal diet. And then for five days, they either did the fasting mimicking diet which is, you know, about 700 calories or so, low protein, like 9%, 10% protein, and the rest a mix of carbs and fat, uh, mostly plant-based. Or they did a Mediterranean-style diet for five days and then went back to their regular eating, which I thought was kind of interesting because I'd rather see somebody eating a Mediterranean-style diet the whole time rather than just five days, but agree that the five five days of fasting, you wouldn't want to do probably more than that. And that can be quite a bit for people to do that every month. Now, interesting, for the primary endpoint, what they found was there actually was no difference um, in the change in protein in the urine between the two groups. But you can classify protein in the urine as two types, microscopic, which means you need a microscope to see it, or macroscopic, which means you can just see it. Basically, it's a lot of protein or a little protein is sort of like the easy way to think about it. Um, And for those who had microscopic, so sort of the earlier stages, they did significantly decrease the amount of protein leaking into the urine with the five days per month of the fasting mimicking diet. You know, other markers that they were following, there was a whole list of them that really had no change, whether it was the lipids or the blood pressure, the the fasting blood glucose, liver function test, the measured uh, kidney function based on creatinine, um, the inflammatory markers, but things that did improve were the hemoglobin A1C, measures of insulin resistance, the HOMA IR, and weight. The, uh, the fasting mimicking diet group lost 7.2 kilograms, which is actually pretty good for six months, um, versus just 1.1 kilogram for the regular um, diet, the, the Mediterranean diet group. But interesting, there wasn't a change in body composition in terms of percentage of, of fat mass or lean mass loss, which basically suggests they lost equal amount fat and lean mass, which is not exactly what you want to do, right? You want to lose fat mass, but gain lean mass. So it wasn't maybe the, necessarily the healthiest version of weight loss because you want to make sure you're not losing lean mass, but there was a significant weight loss improvement um, in the fasting mimicking diet group. And then there were other markers of like DNA, measures of DNA damage or repair, which there was no change. You know, and that's part of this concept of the fasting mimicking diet or, or longer fast that, that it helps with autophagy and longevity. And But, you know, is DNA repair and damage a measurement of that? Well, not in this study. It, it is kind of based on weak study, mostly animal models and is a leap of faith, but there's still some potential there, just not in the way they measured it here. So I think that's one important. Um, another take home is that you know, sort of the weakness of the fasting blood sugar measurement. That did not change, but A1C improved, right? Um, 
and insulin resistance scores improved, which I think is important that there are more, there are better measurements to test your blood sugar regulation, your insulin sensitivity, um, than fasting blood sugar. That's probably the worst one we can do. And that's where, you know, continuous glucose monitors can be helpful, um, or just other tests like, uh, HOMA IR and, um, and hemoglobin A1C. And then the other interesting finding was that 67% of those people randomized to the five days of fasting mimicking diet were able to decrease their diabetes meds, whereas those randomized to the Mediterranean diet actually had to increase their diabetes meds. Um, that said 21% increase, which I had to just kind of do a double take. I thought they meant 21% decrease, but it clearly said 21% increase. So I was very interested in that. So what's the take home? There's a lot of data in this study. What's the take home? Well, you know, five days of fasting, and I don't think it has to be a fasting mimicking diet. I think you could do water fast, bone broth fast. Um, there are lots of different versions of fast, but um, five days of fasting per month for six months, which is a, you know, pretty intense intervention for a lot of people, did reduce um, the amount of protein leaked in the urine for those with early stage microscopic proteinuria, but not so much with the late stage with the macro, the, um, the macroscopic proteinuria. So if you catch it early and start intervening, you might have some benefits. And there are also benefits for weight loss, but again, maybe not the healthiest weight loss because you want to make sure you're maintaining lean mass and not losing both lean mass and fat mass. And there were benefits to blood sugar um, and shows how fasting blood sugar is not the best marker. Um, but not any benefit for DNA repair damage, although it was a small study and, you know, there's still some hope that maybe it does have some benefits for autophagy or for longevity down the road, but that needs better studying. So just interesting to get one more thing for uh, intermittent fasting in terms of potential benefits. But again, knowing how to do it correctly is really important. So I would have liked to have seen, um, you know, more control over the baseline diet, a better baseline diet. I would like to have seen some resistance training and making sure you're getting adequate protein before and after the fasting um, five days to make sure that you're losing as little lean mass as possible um, and, and trying to build lean mass because that's what we want. We want to lose fat mass and build lean mass. So I think I was interested in the study as much for the main conclusions as sort of the little caveats and the little nuggets that you can pick from it. So hopefully this was helpful just to give you sort of a, a, a deeper understanding about now, fasting, fasting mimicking diets, what kind of effects they have on your physiology, both good and potentially concerning, um, and maybe how to structure things a little bit better. But if you have type 2 diabetes um, and you have protein in your urine, you know, consider talking to your doctor to see if this could be an intervention. But one question that remains, is it any better than a low carb or ketogenic diet, right? That's the other thing. Um, maybe you don't have to go to those extremes of the fasting if you can maintain a low carb or ketogenic diet. I'd love to see that head-to-head -head trial doesn't exist, but maybe we'll see it someday. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you next time here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube.